Hello again. Welcome to episode 781. And the topic today, which I'll get to in a moment, is compliment or criticism. Which do you prefer and which do you really, sorry, which do you hear, which do you really prefer? I think that's what I said. Something like that. I'll explain what I mean and also why it's so important to you. Yes, to you. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day and what they're about. Um, you know, that'll help. My name is Barry Selby. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do these talks every day. Um, I am a best selling author of the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, couple uh, for everybody. Everybody? Yeah, everybody. Um, <laughs> I'm also an inspirational speaker and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my talks and definitely my coaching and what started these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. And so today's episode is number 781 because I've done a bunch of these. And the topic about today is about criticism and compliments because there's an interesting thing that we do as human beings and you're one of them, so you might want to listen up, but how we receive them. So which is why I said, you know, which do you hear and which do you really prefer? The reason I'm saying that is because it's amazing to me how some people actually prefer criticism over compliments. And you're saying, that's not me, I prefer compliments. Like, are you sure? Let me give you a couple of scenarios to start with. First of all, when someone compliments you, compl compliments you and praises you, do you just take it on and go, yeah, absolutely, thank you very much? Probably not. Um, but also, are you someone who goes, oh, no, you shouldn't have, it's, not, I, it's okay, if only you knew, or um, but you didn't see what I did uh, yesterday, that was so much worse, type stuff. A lot of people I know tend to respond that way because they're not comfortable taking praise. Partly because they don't believe that it's um, respectful to take praise, which is interesting. It's one of mine, so I know it's interesting. <laughs> or that they sit in a place where they get too e egotistical about it and they would get, they, they'd be worried about being too um, arrogant. Because complimentary, overly complimentary feedback can, according to some people's theories, lead to being arrogant. On the other side of the coin, some people are, um, I won't say addicted to, but certainly are in the arena, so to speak, of receiving criticism more than they are compliments, meaning that they don't hear people giving the compliments, but they do hear them criticizing. Now, you may or may not know this experience yourself. You may or may not be conscious of this experience yourself, because that's another level, by the way. For some people, I'm using just generate some people because I don't want to say you because I don't want to presume what's true for you. And I'm also not going to expose necessarily what's true for me either because I've shifted a lot and I've had a lot of journeys of growth. But the thing about compliments and criticism is that in a way they're two sides of the same coin. They're feedback. Oh, okay. Didn't expect that one. That's an interesting little metaphor piece I can use there. Okay, I'll come back to that one. But one of the things I say is like, you know, when, when someone says to you, you know, you did a great job, you're doing fabulously, and you, they, they compliment you, and you might go, oh, you shouldn't have. Why don't we say that when someone criticizes you? If someone says, oh, you did a lousy job, you didn't, you know, you didn't do very well, you simply go to them, you shouldn't have, because it's not true. I mean, I'm joking, but kind of, we refuse compliments, but we don't refuse criticism. That's, a tr that's an interesting switch about ownership of who we are. And again, I'm talking, I don't want to talk about ego here. I'm talking about just real honesty and self-worth, which some people have a hard time with. All right, let me get back to the feedback piece because that just came up out of the blue and I didn't realize the, the value of that. So I, done a, I did talk a while ago, probably a couple of months ago now, about the power of feedback, where feedback is a mechanism to learn how to do things. And positive and negative feedback is okay because either one of them gives you guidance. I was talking about the analogy of airplanes, and I'm going to come back to the point about compliments and, and criticism in a moment, but I'm just going to go off on a tangent slightly with meaning around feedback. So something I learned in a seminar years and years ago now, let me make sure, I'm, okay, make sure I was plugged in because I was just ensuring it was. In the seminar, we did a process where we learned about the power of feedback, and what they were using is an, an analogy is the way that, well, first of all, they use the analogy of the airplane. An airplane on autopilot is off course more times than it's on course, meaning that it's getting negative feedback off course, off course, off course, 
more frequently is getting positive feedback, which is on course. So flying from LA to New York, is uh, some statistic they threw out there was about how planes are off course 94% of the time. Because what they're doing is they don't go straight line. They go off and then course correct. They go off and then course correct. They go off and course correct. That's how planes fly. Automatically tweaking and adjusting. That is something that is the way, the way life works as well. Now, another piece they've talked about how um, some people feel they're going to declare there's no, no room for negative feedback. So I'm going to ignore criticism entirely, just going to feel, focus on compliments. That doesn't work either because criticism, criticism can be helpful when it's used properly and also when it's delivered properly too because some people are able to pr provide criticism in a constructive way and some people relish giving it in a destruct destructive way. And some people receive feedback, in a, sorry, receive criticism in a positive way. In a, sorry, in a constructive way. I'm going to remember my, my words here. <laughs> so some people receive criticism in, in a constructive way. Some people receive criticism in a destructive way. It's all choice. So, come back to one of the points I've said in the previous broadcast. You have the choice about how you receive information. That person may be criticizing you out of destructive intention to make you feel bad about yourself. And you may take the feedback as going, you know what, that's useful, I can use that. And you can build yourself up with it. So criticism for you could be constructive, additive, effective, positive. So the idea about being on course, off course, that positive negative experience of, of feedback allies to constructive and destructive criticism as well. Compliments are wonderful as well, so I'm not going to say don't do that. However, compliments usually are icing on the cake, I'd say, because Yes, it's wonderful to be complimented, especially when you do something great and people notice it. And you're kind of like, I feel good about that. You know, get, I'm going to get um, feedback on my broadcast. People like what I say. I, could, I do feel kind of like, that was cool. I'm, I'm glad I said that because it gave somebody some value. But I don't live my days on that. My life isn't dependent upon that because, frankly, it'd be very thin on the ground if I was relying on that one thing. But criticism comes back in different ways. And that happens not just in direct communication, by the way. You may be noticing that you get criticism coming through by things you read, because maybe you'll write about the an article in the newspaper on newspaper, such an ancient thing, in a website or a blog that critiques something about your preferences or your hobbies or your lifestyle or what your gender or sexual preference is, and you may take it personally. The choice inside is: do you take that and destroy yourself with it, or do you take that and improve yourself with it? Again, destructive, constructive. It's two choices. Either one works. It's up to you what you do with it. At the same time, that praising stuff where people write about you, it's great stuff, and you go, oh, I feel so grateful for that. It's not very effective for anything except just to remind yourself to keep going. Yes, you can use, praise, you can use that first place win, so to speak, to lift yourself up further, to encourage yourself to move forward and to be more successful. Oftentimes, though, it's the criticism where you get the feedback that works because the reason is for when you're getting to, when you're getting feedback that simply says do the same thing keep doing the same thing it's like okay if that works so be it but oftentimes for most of us we find ourselves wondering why we're not quite as successful as we want to be in life in love in relationships in business and all sorts of areas and having someone give us feedback that we can use to redirect and course correct like that plane or other pilot as I mentioned is more effective than just being safe just keep going where you're going there's, um, and just for a couple of moments, going to go with that analogy about the airplane thing, because there were three, three or four different um, responses to feedback. That's right, yeah. So, I remember this is a thing, this is a pra this is a um, exercise from a workshop I took many, many, many years ago. So I'm remembering it as I'm saying this. So again, the plane is off course, on course, off course, on course, on course, off course, and mostly off course. Most of the time, it's flying from A to B. So LA, LA to New York. The thing is though, we don't always take feedback um, in a neutral way. We often take feedback in a negative way because most people, sweet to me, criticism, I'm, I'm flipping my words here. We don't always take criticism in a neutral way. Oftentimes we take criticism in a negative way. So I wanna give you some, some tips on how to make it positive because this is the thing. When you take it negatively, it's destructive, as I said. So that negative feedback, that negative criticism can be um, 
identified by how you respond, meaning that the way you respond is, is a clue as to maybe how you're taking the feedback, that criticism. If, for example, someone gives you criticism and you curl up in a ball and cry, that's a negative response to the criticism, meaning that you didn't take the, response, you didn't take the criticism as a positive direction, you took it negatively. Kind of obvious, yeah? Another one could be where someone gives you that criticism, that criticism that you then choose to take negatively, and rather than do that, you stick your fingers in your ears and ignore it and go, I'm not listening, I'm not listening, I'm not listening. Meanwhile, you drive yourself off a cliff. Criticism is useful feedback when you do it the right way. Um, another one of those, and this is, by the way, a lesson about the journey of a thousand miles starts in one step. Here's a clue, by the way. If you receive negative criticism and you presume that's the truth and you go running off with that, thinking that's the way to do things, without course correcting along the way, you'll miss the target completely. For example, if that airplane already took off from LA, the first time it got, course, got off course and then got an on course feedback, and it said, okay, I'm great, I'm signed up now, and it goes straight, that on course is going, basically what do, if that line, let me see this, let me, let me back a second. Imagine the line from LA to New York is a straight line, straight through. And when a plane flight takes off, it goes off course because it doesn't have exact direction. The planes don't have that, they do, they do compass points because things shift, wind, direct, wind turbulence, and wind, um, um, air pockets, also I'm, I'm symbolizing air pockets, that was weird. They, they move the plane around, so the plane has to come back on course. So the plane goes off course initially, and as it crosses back, it crosses over that center line, on course for a moment, before it goes off course the other side. Then it comes back, on course again, and off course, the way it works. If the first time that the pilot, or the plane, or whatever in your life, you get the, get the feedback, you're on course, and you just run, the thing is, you're gonna go off course after that all the way forward. Now, I'm not sure if this analogy works in, in hand gestures on the screen, but over it makes sense. The point is, in this case, is that feedback and criticism are useful when you use them positively to construct versus destruct. And secondly, it's important to check in along the way. There are opportunities along the way all the time to get feedback. And sometimes that can come in positive ways or negative ways, as I mentioned. But also you can take the negative, quote, feedback in a positive or negative way as well. So my underlying message to you is, first of all, that be aware of what, what you're listening for and what you're hearing mostly, because some people don't even hear compliments or they don't even hear negative feedback, excuse me, criticism. Be open to listening on all levels, because when you hear, feed, when you hear compliments, take them in, receive them and enjoy them. You don't want to put them down, you don't want to ignore them, you don't want to just pretend they didn't happen. When you receive criticism, how can it be useful to your upliftment and growth? Because criticism, again, it's a two-edged sword, in a, so to speak. You can use it against yourself as a destructive form or constructively to build yourself up to get in the direction you want to go in. So having understanding that criticism is a tool you can use versus automatic game changer out of the game, it's important for you to realize you can make a difference with that. So my message here is really simple. Everything that comes at you is feedback, whether it is compliments or criticism. You can, you can do, you can, Choose to interpret those as you as you want, positive or negative, it's up to you. But the realization is that everything that comes at you in terms of feedback can be responded to, responded to, not reacted to, responded to, there's another piece of my teaching, in a positive way versus a negative way. So compliments, because a lot of people take compliments and they spin them negatively inside themselves. Because they'll say, you know, you shouldn't have said that because I'm not that good, or I did that, did something bad the other day. They take someone giving them compliments and spin a dark negative tale inside themselves. So both compliments and criticism have a positive and negative spin available depending on what you do with them inside. So criticism especially, because the one most people collapse on, is a form of feedback that can help you get where you want to go if you choose to take it positively and you choose to make it constructive. It is challenging sometimes because when someone gives you feedback, it's tempting to just collapse and go, oh shit, I should give up. Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes you do get feedback that is clear that the direction you're going is not the right one. But rather than go, I'll give up, it's like, oh, good feedback, let me try and course, go over this direction instead. The lessons keep coming. I've had them in my life more times than I can count. So I know this stuff works. And so this is my, my offering to you to know that you can have this too. Because maybe you didn't know this, or you probably, it's likely you didn't do the workshop I took 
35 years ago. But this piece is very useful and it will help you get some clarity, some success and the direction where you want to go in your life, which is why I'm sharing it. Ta-da! <laughs> Um, this, <laughs> yeah, okay. This is part of my work in my coaching with my clients. It's also part of my work in my courses and group, group programs that I'm launching. So I'm going to put some links in the comments for you to consider for yourself, especially if you find yourself stuck with this area. Um, first of all, I'm going to, I'm, one of the things I'm going to put in there is, is what I call coming home to yourself. It's my new group program and launching as a beta test. It's actually, it's actually just, you know, um, transparently, it's a pay what you want course because it's a beta test. Once it launches pr fully, after everyone's gone through it the first time, then it'll be a full pre-tail price. So right now it's a good time to check it out. There's a link in the comments, you can check that out. It's a group program I'm going to put I'm putting together. It's not launched yet because I'm waiting for more people to join it. And there's a link in there, you can s schedule a call with me and we can talk. Um, that's one. Secondly, as a constant reminder, I'm passionate about the self-love aspect of life. So I'm going to put in the comments my the link to my self-love guided meditation course because it will change your life, it will change your relationship with yourself, it will change your relationship with everybody else. Worth doing. That'll be in the comments too. And thirdly, um, if you wanna reach out and have a chat with me, I'll put a link in the comments for a clarity conversation with me so you can talk to me and have another conversation, see where you are, see where you wanna go, and we can go from there. Um, that'll do. I hope you have questions, thoughts about this broadcast, please put them below. This, oh, I forgot to remind you. This is my daily Facebook Live in case you haven't seen me before. Hi, if you haven't seen me before. I do this talk at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day on my personal page, um, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. All the replays get saved, of course. They're easy to find on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Um, you can watch them all there. Please like my page. But even more easily than that, you can find them on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to that channel. And there's a play playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where all of them list in reverse order from newest to oldest. It's, just e it's easier in the browser to search through a playlist on YouTube than it is on Facebook because they're all condensed, more easily visible. So a little shortcut there. If you have any questions, thoughts about this topic and you want to talk about it, you can read the message me over social media or you can just comment below and I'll respond when I sign off. And if you know anyone should see it, please let them know and uh, maybe they'll get some value from it. Again, Criticism and compliments are available to you in different formats. You can choose to respond to them how you wish. I personally recommend you learn how to use them constructively. If that's not so easy, let's talk. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.